Some of you know that I spent about 18 months of my life um, being paid by the BBC to help them uh, bring to fruition the, the microbit, starting about November 2014, I think my first involvement was. Um, and I guess one of the main motivations for my talk is to try and dispel some of the, um, the perception that I think some people have got of what microbit was intended to be, what it um, turned out to be, and what were the, um, the motivations of the people behind it. Because uh, um, my experience was that uh, um, although, yeah, so it, it, it wasn't born from the business departments, it, it, it wasn't something that sprang from the marketing departments of the, of the corporations that were involved in it. It was very much driven by individual people, particularly, I, I'm, I'm going to deliberately not name check people because, uh, um, you know, where do you stop and who gets left out? Um, but this guy particularly is the, the guy behind it, uh, Howard Baker, who started driving this within the BBC, certainly from about 2011 onwards. Um, and he said, yeah, I don't know how many of you saw the, uh, the presentation yesterday, quick show of uh, yeah, David Allen. Um, and I found it really, really interesting, the, the parallels between, and uh, the parallels and the differences actually between the BBC micro development of what, getting on for 40 years ago, and, and the, some of the same hurdles that uh, had to be coped with internally within the BBC um, on this. Um, things that are, um, you, know, you know the wonderful thing, other listing magazines are available. The BBC have to comply with um, a very level playing field, particularly in the year that Microbit was coming about because it was the Royal Charter renewal year. And I don't understand why, but there seems to be quite a, 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 um, a few people with political gripes against the BBC. I don't uh, uh, I tend not to, to follow most of that stuff. Um, but they had to not favour any commercial opportunity. The other thing was they were not allowed to spend any license payers' money on, it, it's very ring-fenced on what they can spend money on and what they can't spend money on. Um, so apart from funding a few people um, to allow some of their time on it, they, they were allowed to make programmes, they were allowed to make, uh, help create some of the content from their, um, the education budget, but they weren't allowed to put any of any money into the, the, the actual delivery of the, of the hardware itself. So um, my first involvement was, I, I got called in, um, um, a, a fair few, of the, f fair few of you will know Alexandra Deschamps on Sino, the person through who, who most things IoT flow. Um, she'd been working with BBC R&D for quite a while, advising on IoT stuff. And when this project um, came onto her radar, they said they needed someone with an um, experience of high volume manufacturing, um, cost sensitive toy type stuff, which is uh, why they called me in. Um, so my background is I, I, I worked for one of the big consultancies back in the late 90s um, doing high volume cost sensitive stuff so it was toys consumer end of medical um things like uh, counters for asthma inhalers that were kind of rattled off in 10 million off um so i had a all as we'll see the micro bit is or isn't a toy um the the definition of toy um or targeted at children is um open to uh, uh, interpretation, shall we say. So the first involvement was helping the BBC understand who they might be able to go out and ask for a million pounds each, which is quite a, quite a fun thing to do. Um, bless them, they, they, they didn't particularly 
um, understand a great deal about um, the, the semiconductor landscape. So kind of first explanation is ARM don't make chips, ARM design chips. Um, but that's actually played, it, it kind of meshed in quite nicely because by being on a, um, um, being, having a, a centering on ARM, they could then invite various different silicon vendors to contribute some chips each. And we thought it was possibly more likely that you might be able to get 300,000 chips from one vendor and 300,000 from someone else and 300,000 from someone else. Um, oh. Okay. Caught it in time. Um, okay, so this is, I, when I first went up and, and chatted to them and, and, and Howard, yeah, I, complete, I completely got it. Um, I, I understand, understood where he was coming from. And um, as, I, as I said to them when I went up there, um, if, I, if I gave my kids, if, if, well, if, if I took a Raspberry Pi, I have a, an 11 and a 12 year old that you'll see in a minute. Um, so they're, they're the right age group for, um, they, they, they were sort of the target audience anyway. Um, but if I took a Raspberry Pi and I attached the very best, brightest screen that I could lay my hands on, and I put the best capacitive, projected capacitive touch stuff on it, and I nursed every last bit of horsepower out of the GPU, my kids would go, yeah, but it's not an iPad. Um, because that's, that's what they've grown up with. Um, no, they haven't grown up with an iPad, I hasten to add, but uh, they, they've grown up with cheap Android things that uh, never really quite work and, uh, and they, they resent me for it. Um, but kids today, they, they, they have, they, they've grown up with, the, the majority of them have grown up with um, touch interfaces. They, uh, uh, toddlers will pick up a, a, um, a toy and try and swipe it. It's just instinctive to them to, to do this sort of thing. And if you, my experience has been that trying to get my kids interested in, in things like Scratch, um, when, they're, when they're doing things that go on on the other side of a piece of glass, it's a virtual world that they're very familiar with, but whatever they do, their, their, their first efforts, and probably the, the first five, 10 years of their efforts, if they go into video game programming or whatever, are going to be disappointing compared with what they've grown up with. Um, you know, it's, 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 there's a certain gratification in making the, 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 the cat run around on the screen and then you get imaginative and turn it into something more dodgy. Um, but there, there is a, a very different world lives on the other side of the piece of glass for me. Um, so the, the, the counter of that is that my kids occasionally stick their head into the, my um, spare bedroom lab and they'll see a little servo motor twitching or something like that. And they go, oh, that's cool, what's that? And, and they're intrigued by these things. It's not something that they've, that they've really come across before. Yeah, it's, I, I, I think we're sort of... Yep, okay. Um, yeah, I, th I think it's something that we're all on board with, that um, electronics kits and getting your hands in there and sometimes letting the smoke out is... Uh, it's a really great place to, to start, great excitement from the first time something works and great mystery when the thing doesn't work or stops working. Um, so so th this is actually um, uh, an example of something that was put together by a seven-year-old um, just recently. And uh, yeah, they've ended up using the micro bit with yeah, touch sensors, buzzer, flashing LED on, on Rudolph's nose down there. Um, and it is, it, 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 
if, if something is physical, um, even if the, the, your mind then enhances that, the imagination, it, it, it enhances it far more effectively than you trying to create that via graphics on a screen. Um, it's certainly not a, you know, I, I have great respect for um, the Raspberry Pi, and so on, and Evan Upton came along to some of the early meetings um, with the consortium. So it's, uh, it's very much addressing a, a different aspect. Um, but I, 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 to me, this is, this, is, this is real hardware. It's Arduino style rather than, um, uh, rather than operating systems and that kind of programming. So yeah, hands up, confession. I'm strange, I'm a, I'm a geek. Um, the, the, the strange thing, really, is that I'm a creative engineer. At least I, I consider myself so. Um, and, you know, I, I'd say most of, most of you here are more creative and probably more engineering than me. I, I, I won't say you're stranger than me, but, uh, <laughs> um, but we, 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 we have to um, accept that we are um, a few percent of a few percent, and people who come along to this are a few percent of those who are bothered enough to do this in their, in their own time. So we are, if you like, the, I'd say, the real elite, or the, um, um, uh, to borrow a phrase from one of my, one of my old bosses, Adrian Woodward, um, he used to explain bell curves, um, and he talked about his three Sigma shoes. He had a pair of red driving boots that he wore all the time. And, uh, yeah, he drove those because he had a TVR and he enjoyed the extra excitement of touching the, the pedals and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, he always said, yeah, yeah, I, I'm 99.7% I'm of the way up that bell curve uh, in that. So whenever we were trying to design products for the general public, we had to de detach ourselves from, the, um, from our mindset and remember that, yeah, we are a bit strange. Um, and yet, so um, go, going back to um, the, the BBC micro days of 40 years ago, um, people like us, or people, you know, the equivalent people as us then, you know, were, 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 some were capable of getting a load of 7.4 series logic chips, soldering them together and creating the things that, that we create. But it was the it was the democratization, if you like, of the, the ZX81s, in my case, um, the VIC-20s the, and the, the BBC Micros that really took that and opened it up for, for most people to get involved. And uh, it's um, a lot of the scene around um, the kind of industry that we're involved today, I think, really harks back to the sort of the, the, the early 80s that drew us into it, but also um, got UK involved in that kind of thing. So, and, and, and this, um, um, one, of the, one, of, one of the partners, Tech Will Save Us, helped us get our heads around um, what should be in and what should be out when we were doing the cost reduction. Um, and they, they, they said, divide the, the, divide the kids into four, there are the currently capable and the less capable, and there are the, the currently interested and the less interested. And I remember Beatrice in, in, in block B there was someone who already had ideas for what they wanted to do um, and wanted to get involved with this kind of thing and had some kind of capability, understanding of what to do. And the key point is, Microbit is not for Beatrice. Um, Beatrice can go out and buy an Arduino. Um, such things already exist. Beatrice can lash things onto a Raspberry Pi. Um, or, or, yeah, alternative products were already out there for that. The, and yeah, that's probably, you know, perhaps three, four percent of the kids, if that, uh, perhaps more like one percent. 
um, the, the key point was to take those who were interested but not capable or, or capable but not interested and enthuse them or enable them and get the, if you like, maybe the, perhaps, you know, we, we were hopeful, it, maybe it was probably something like 40% lived somewhere in the, in the A and D sectors there. We've moved them in. And we, we had to accept that there were going to be the, um, the Cs that, who didn't know, didn't know what they were supposed to do, didn't, w did, weren't interested, and they would probably play spinning them across the playground or something like that. Um, but there's there the opportunity there for them to, 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 to move into one of the other categories and then uh, into where they would, we would like them to be. Um, so making that real, Sam and Izzy, my kids, um, uh, they're both into football, actually, so don't, uh, don't, don't take uh, gender stereotypes here. Um, but Izzy's an engineer. Um, thanks to um, Chelsea here last, uh, last year, um, she learned to solder. Why she hadn't come into my room in the previous three years for me to show her how to solder, I don't know, but it's, uh, uh, you know, dad knows nothing. Um, and, and, and Sam, I try to inspire into this thing, but he's having nothing to do with, um, with, with engineering. Um, incidentally, uh, yes, he did touch him, and yes, we did get a free kick, and, and we scored from it. <laughs> um, but... Ma making this real, I, I tried to get, I, say to, I said to Sam, okay, the, what would interest you? What can you do with, with your football with this? I say, maybe there's a, you, know, you put a pedometer um, in your boot and you can see how many steps you take during a football match. Um, you know, give them to, to your friends and see how, many, you know, how much running each of you does and compare at the end. You know, yeah, whatever. Um, but about 20 minutes later, he came back and he said, actually, would I be able to put one on each shin pad and count how many times during a match I play the ball with my left foot and with my right foot? Because Sam's actually really two-footed. So the, one of the things he's really proud about is that all of his, his mates can only play left wing or right wing. Um, and he wanted to, to show off to his mates that he was really, uh, really two-footed. Um, and that's the thing that, you know, there, there's so many example programs out there for heart rate monitors, pedometers, that sort of thing. Whatever we try and dream up for kids, um, the majority of them, the majority of the ideas are going to uh, not get, it's not going to inspire them. It's actually the, um, the kids' ideas themselves that, that need to be enabled. Um, and I think that, 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 that it goes beyond kids. I mean, I'll, I'll I'll confess that most of my interest in getting involved with, with Microbit was a bit selfish because um, I see um, a lot of entrepreneurial ideas around the accelerators, the startups, um, and so many of them, particularly in IoT, where you've got so many disciplines required to even get to a prototype stage, um, they come from um, a, a, a very small select group of generally engineering-minded people. Um, and what I saw was that, you know, beyond 10 years ago, prior to 10 years ago, you had to be, the pe you had to be one of the people who had either studied um, a couple of subjects at, at university and combined them, or you had to have grown up with the, um, the practical electronics, wireless world, and so on. Um, in my perception, Arduino came along, and um, I, know, I, I know there were you know, other alternatives for that, like um, pick basic stamp and, and those things, but Arduino was kind of a step change in that generally, you know, finger in the air, 10 times as many people were now able to make some sort of prototype because you didn't have to pick up a soldering iron and the programming language was more accessible. And that's great because uh, you know, a lot of um, techie-minded artists, the, the maker movement, um, were suddenly able to express their own ideas without having to persuade 
um, uh, an electronic C-type person to, to help them out. Um, however, you did still generally have to install something on your computer. You had to go through configuration steps. And you had to be reasonably familiar or you know, accepting of square brackets, curly brackets, semicolons at the end of the lines, those sorts of things. What I, what I hope will be happening with the, with the next step from that, with, with things like um, scratch-style blocks, programming, that sort of thing, but by making it more accessible, we might end up with a further tenfold increase in the people who are able to, to do things. So, so for example, yeah, the startups that I work with um, most of them will reluctantly try and get into a bit of Arduino, but there's, but there's a whole load more who really can't get their heads around that. Um, and it's going to be the plumbers, the electricians, the horse owners, the, um, the people with in-depth knowledge of the, of, of the application that come up with the best ideas. Um, and if I can get them trying out their, their first ideas on something as simple as this, if they're not patronised by reading a tutorial written for an 11-year-old, um, then the best ideas will come through. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to sit here and uh, take it on, take the good ones into production. Yeah, so I, I do believe in IoT, but I don't think it's the fridge ordering milk. Um, you know, it's not going to be 50 billion um, thermostats we would we were doing re remote thermostats back in the back in the 90s, and my boss at the time said, "Yeah, yeah, you could you could do all this 20 years ago before." Um, and actually, most people aren't that bothered about um, turning their heating on before they leave the the comfort of their their office. Um, there is a killer app out there somewhere. I don't know what it is, but it's going to be something that we haven't dreamt up. Um, I, I'm prepared to bet that in 10 years' time we'll, we'll be here going, ah, oh, yeah, that's, that's where the 50 billion devices are. But none of us at this stage have seen what it is. Um, and that's why we want, hopefully, a, a thousand times as many people out there trying their ideas. Um, and, yeah, particularly, I want my kids to be thinking of the technology as a tool rather than waiting to be spoon-fed by... Uh, whatever, uh, waiting for someone else to write an app that behaves in the way that they want to use it. <clears throat> um, I won't, uh, uh, sorry, could you just refresh your screen? <laughs> so, how am I doing? Okay. Um, right, I'll, I'll press on. Um, right. Okay, right, uh, yeah, something actually into the, the, the actual making of the micro bit. Um, this is um, John, Johnny Austin from ARM, one of the embed team. Um, one, um, probably the, the key guy from ARM's side in actually getting things um, during the development. Um, his, his colleague, Chris Stiles, actually laid the board out because al although ARM were on board with it, um, it was largely down to people to find their own time around their other work to, to progress with this. And um, Chris helped, uh, did, laid out the first board on a flight back from Shanghai. Um, and there's, a, there's actually a picture of him at about 37,000 feet over Moscow, um, a capture of his um, seat back screen saying, oh yeah, okay, finish the, um, the, the layout. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, will anyone here claim to have laid out a, a, a PCB and it been perfect first time and didn't have any revisions? Um, so the, the, the first board, there was the classic thing of the, um, the USB connector being on the wrong layer, so the five pins were reversed. Um, and that board, using the, the fast turnaround people that they'd um, used before, took two weeks. Um, so I said, look, okay, let's, you know, let, let's see if we can do this board a bit, a bit faster. Um, so we then shrank it down to this, this was the, the first 
um, microbit at size board. So Chris was on another flight back from Shanghai um, and did the same again. And he revised it a little bit over breakfast. And at 8.30 in the morning, it was still data on his PC. <coughs> um, just south of Cambridge in Saffron Walden, there's a, a, board layout, uh, a, a board production company, RAK, uh, who we happen to know from 20 odd years ago. <coughs> um, and this, this, this is where kind of the real people connection comes in because my board layout guy, um, Genesis Pro Systems, um, happens to ride a bike and is a big enthusiast and the owner of RAK is also a cycling enthusiast. It meant that John could go down to RAK and stand there at the end of the machine and talk about who was going to do well in the Tour de France this year or whatever. Um, and then as the boards came out, <laughs> grab them, hop in his car, drive up about uh, 10 miles to the north side of Cambridge to another little company, EFS, who um, specialise in being able to hand solder non-hand solderable components. So yeah, they, 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 they sat there and they, 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 they ran up two boards um, with loads of little 0402 um, capacitors and you know, the, the kind of things that if you, if, if you cough, they, they fly across the, the bench. Um, and a couple of um, you know, the, 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 the key chips on there were um, sort of 32 or 48 um, pad QFNs with only the connections underneath. Um, so their specialism is, is doing that fine work. And then popped it back down to um, John Lancaster who uh, took it in, squirted the code in, and it was back on in ARM's um, lab at 18.30 running firmware. Um, and this is, yeah, I'm a big fan of Shenzhen, having worked with um, Chinese toy manufacturers for, for many years. They, they do things great, but I, I do just want to um, rail against a little bit the incubators and, and uh, accelerators who say, you can't do any of this here. The only place you can do it is, is Shenzhen, which is not true. Um, uh, a few of you might know Adrian Godwin, so we had a, a quick um, uh, pop into a local EMC facility that we were allowed to use ourselves rather than submitting for tests, do a quick bit of radio testing. Adrian ended up having to drive most of the way around um, um, East Anglia at one point, getting some radio testing done because there was, there was one little peak that, um, that was probably going to... Uh, fail the, uh, the, the, the radio test on the first one. Um, and actually, that, that came about. But the, the first batch that were manufactured in China and came over, there was a, um, a component that it was decided would be better not on there. Um, and a, um, Walkbury, a company in um, Peterborough who specialise in rework, uh, were again very accommodating. I phoned them up and said, well, you know, "Do you think you could um, do you think you could take a component off some boards for us?" And they said, mm, "What sum?" I said, mm, "Twenty-six thousand." Um, and they said, "Okay, yeah, yeah, pop them up." And I, I was I was kind of blown away that they'd be they'd be kind of set up and ready to do this. I didn't think rework happened like that um, in those kind of volumes in the UK. And they said, "Yeah, it's." You know, it's it's nothing special. Um, it's, it's really quite common for people to get things manufactured and the, the samples all, all come through fine. And then they, the, the shipping container gets cleared from Felix Stowe docks. And the, 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 the bright-eyed young entrepreneur opens up the, the doors of the shipping container and goes, what on earth, have they, you know, what on earth has gone, gone on um, several time zones away? Um, and misunderstandings happen. Um, so, so Walkbury's main business is, is doing rework rectification of things that so the units don't have to get sent back for another six weeks in, on a ship. Okay, I'm just going to, because uh, 
Um, okay, so one of the things I, I, I really enjoyed about this process was um, jumping back, it was about 15 years since I got out of really working on, on toys. Um, and the, the, the recognition, uh, am I okay to overrun by a few minutes? Well, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, the, the, the working at a million off is, is great. You kind of go, oh, well, yeah, yeah sh shall we have this component on or shall we not? And then you kind of go, okay, yeah, so one million times that component is about the price of a car or one, one million times that component is about the price of my house. Um, and by this point, um, the, the, the consortium members didn't have any more money that they could raid from their CSR budgets or um, so on. So we, 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 it really was quite critical that we had to get to these million units made um, within the, with the, the existing budget. And, and actually, yeah, uh, there was a whole load of extra pressure because a certain, I won't say because, but yeah, part of it was a certain Mr. Clarkson um, decided to we really, really wanted a steak sandwich or a steak, and uh, um, uh, that had quite a, a, a budget impact because the, uh, the, the the Top Gear franchise going off was a big expense to the BBC, apparently. Um, so um, I also remember sitting in, in one of the meetings um, and going, okay, so how, the, how things are going to go on on the production line? Um, and they said, oh, yeah, it'll be all right, it'll be all right. And I, I just sort of sat there and uh, did a quick mental bit of maths in my head. I went, okay, one million units divided by four weeks, divided by 80 hours, allowing for there being far more working hours in, in China than there are in the UK, um, divided by 60 minutes, divided by, actually, it comes out at about one per second. Um, and... And then we said, oh, actually, yeah, we think there is a problem there because it's going to take about 28 seconds to program each unit. Um, so we, we applied some of the, uh, the, some of the old thinking, um, doing, do, doing clever things like um, uh, having the boards, well, test themselves, but then actually say, yes, I'm programmed and I'm working properly over Bluetooth because that would in itself test the Bluetooth. Um, in the end, it, it turned out that uh, one of the most likely failure points was missoldering of the USB connector, which there, there didn't seem to be any convenient way of testing the USB connector other than plugging it any, in any way. So um, in, in true China style, I think they, they took a, a sit people about 50 wide and, 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 and plug in every single unit uh, as part because we, we had to squirt firmware onto the, onto the devices anyway. So there was, um, we, we, we could have done it with better nails, but um, it, it turned out that um, many hands was the, uh, was the way around that. Um, okay, I, I, I can go on, do a little bit about uh, um, uh, th the, um, no, no, I'll, I'll just skip to the results, I think. Of course, I, this is the thing I find most gratifying. Um, the, the key one is that first one. Um, that one year on, um, the, the percentage of girls who said they would choose um, computer science as, as a subject option rose from 23% to 39%. Um, and going back to it not being for the Beatrice um, sector, it's that you know, 90% said that, um, that, they, they, that they had a, a, an, an expectation that, that anyone can get in and, and code rather than it being something that you have to leave to, to other people to to do for you. Um, uh, and the, the other important slide is um, the, the, the micro bit is now, it is no longer anything to do with the BBC. The BBC were involved for a year um, and then it's, be, it's, it's now handed over to the, 
the Microbit Educational Foundation. Um, and it's being rolled out around the rest of the world. Um, Croatia, there was a crowdfunding effort there that bought um, Microbits for uh, a thousand of their primary schools. Um, I think it was about 30 odd, it was 300,000 dollars they, they raised to buy, to buy microbits for that. Um, but the Microbit Educational Foundation is, is, is very few people. So, so Johnny Austin that you saw kneeling on the floor before is, is um, doing most of the stuff there on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I, I, I popped him a quick message and said, hey, what to, you know, are, are, are there any calls to action that I could put out here? Um, and his message is, please make accessories, add-ons for it is what um, um, they would do. Um, um, so techmicrobit.org tech micro is the place to go for all of the information um, on that sort of thing. Make lessons that enthuse kids. You know, um, um, David from Dorkbot yesterday. Um, that's the thing that excites kids. It, it's things catching fire. Um, obviously, that's not something that BBC could do, um, but those are the kind of things that, uh, that actually get kids interesting, sticking them on rockets, putting them on um, weather balloons and so on. Um, put those cool projects, uh, um, um, they, they, they've got a, a place at Haxter um, is where they're, where they're putting things. Um, on, if you're on the software side, um, uh, improve the DAL, the runtime, um, the editors, and particularly uh, if a, a, a simulator for MicroPython would be hugely um, appreciated. Um, and the design is now open source, the reference design using a, a, a relatively available um, radio module because one of the difficult bits that most people would struggle with is actually laying out the, the RF section of the board. So this, th th this reference design is available, and unfortunately, it was originally um, um, created in Altium, which uh, is a very ex expensive seat to have. It's now been um, transferred to um, certainly KiCad um, and some of the, um, the lower cost tools. Um, but ongoing work on, on, on getting the, the reference designs translated into um, widely available tools is, is something they, that they really want. Um, OK, I think that's uh, probably about my, um, I've certainly overrun. Um, so I'll take a few questions if you like. <laughs>